Uh, it's a keychain for a 2012 Ford Focus SE model. We're here to do an inspection. I think we're going to do some uh, maintenance on it. And uh, we're looking at some tune-up action. Uh, perhaps spark plugs or coils or coil boots or something like that. This particular Focus has 67,426 miles on the odometer. Starting Z engine. Nice. Opening Z hood. Again, we're looking into the 60K service, so let's go ahead, back this thing up, get it into the shop real quick like, and uh, see what we're working with here. Just gonna pull her straight in. I've got a, an avalanche set up for an avalanche. It's way up there. Waiting for uh, some authorizations and some components, so uh, that one's in limbo. We're moving on to this one. We'll just nose her right in here to the, on the little rack, that's good. Parking the auto and oh look pink lights cool and popping the hood powering down huh. all right let's see what we've got what is these a uh, two liter two liters in these focuses where's my hood thing uh -oh. over here there it is a little, little yellow lever that is a oh I don't know Yep, two liter, two liter four cylinder. So one of the first things on the list here was a uh, was spark plug. So let's go ahead and pull one of the plugs out. Unclip one of these guys. That's our ignition coils. That's cylinder one, two, three, and four. Uh, you can tell it's number one because the accessory drives are over here on this side. And generally on a four cylinder, they start one at the front and they end at four in the back. Now, naturally, there's always the exceptions, of course, but. For the most part, that's how they go. Unclick. All right, down in the hole, looks dry. Let's pull this guy out and see what we have here. I'm assuming these are originals. It's 60 something thousand, we'll see. And yep, they say Ford on them. It's a Ford plug. Now let's try to get a closer look in there. Zoom. There we go. Not too terrible. And there's there's a lot of erosion going on there. You see that on the anode and the electrode. It's discolored. I'm sure it's worn a little bit. Yeah, I'd say at 60K, these are uh, due for replacement. Let's go ahead and add that to the list. And since we're uh, doing maintenance checks, let's go over here. We'll check our air filter while it's uh, easily accessible to us. We'll use the same tool, eight millimeter wobbly got three or four little plastic screws on this cover yep there's number four way down there cannot reach cannot easily to reach come here yeah need an extension where's that bolt come here um all right well the bolt turns but it does not unthread that's fun all right so what I'll do, turn into a lot of work for an air filter inspection. I'll pull the rest of these bolts all the way out so they don't fling out and get lost. Then I'll just pull up on the cover while turning that bolt that doesn't come out. And then it comes out. Yeah, they must have stripped the plastic threads down on the other side. Anyway, uh, like I said, a lot of work for an inspection. Uh, this filter is in good shape. No need to replace it. I need to uh, figure out what to do about this strip bolt thing right here, though. I found a... I think I might kind of have an idea. Yeah, okay, yeah, so that thing passes all the way through, right? Watch this. What I'll do is I'll stick a zip tie through the hole and then zip tie it around. That way, the screw has to ride on the zip tie and it'll be able to kind of dig in a little bit and those stripped out threads will be of no matter. And it is no matter. 
again that's a that's a lot of work for a filter inspection my zip ties backwards They're narrow instant regret it's okay I'll be all right gravity of the flashlight variety come on zip tie please no yes here it goes you it's harder than it looks I swear there we go okay so I got a zip tie down in the hole let's go ahead and chop that thing off now when I run the screw down it'll go into the hole between the uh, zip tie and the stripped out thread wall and then I'll be able to tighten that screw is it gonna work hope so click it worked all right good idea says I all right, that's one, two, three, and there's number four right there. A lot of work for an air filter inspection. So I was looking around just to inspect for leaks and things of that nature, and I happened to just take a look down in that spark plug hole. Uh, nothing alarming, but I, I can see a decent amount of carbon down there on top of that piston. Don't know if you guys can see from here, there's, there's a lighting issue. But I can see some carbon down there. I, I think I'm going to add on to this a, uh, an induction cleaning service uh, to go along with a set of spark plugs. Maintenance items. Okay, moving along, we go down. Whoa, 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 look at that. Look at that. We've got like two or three millimeter front brake pads. Look at that. That's, that's not bueno. Okay, let's go take a peek at those rears. Didn't expect to find a need for some brakes on this. And... Yeah, we're about four millimeters. Three or four on those rears, maybe a five. See them down there? Okay. I'll call those uh, yellow. So we need some brakes up front. Uh, we could suggest some brakes out back. We have similar condition right here. And is this one looking? Yeah, that's two or three, maybe four millimeter. All right. Well, while we're on the brakes, check out the fluid. Unclick, please, thank you. How's this looking? Yeah, a little nasty. It could use fluid services as well. Okay, let's put that back. What else on our general 60,000 mile inspection should I be taking a look at? We've got, uh, we've got wipers, we've got brakes. I already checked out the tires earlier. They're, they're mediocre. It could use a set of tires in the future. We're about two or three 30 seconds on the edge. The rears look okay. That's lack of rotation. You get a lot of excessive wear in the fronts and then the rears end up being in very good condition. Mm, okay. Take a peek at this engine oil. Looking pretty good. It's not super black or anything, okay. All right, let's go ahead and lift this thing up. I've got the rack set, black subscribe button. Moving on up. We'll continue our inspection from down below. Okay. Ooh, looky there. That's a torn bushing on the lower control arm. See it right there? Yeah, right. Oh, you can see right there. That's not good, okay. How's the other side doing? Uh, similar, torn bushing, all right. I was looking for leaks, I did not expect to find that. Yeah, she's torn up top too, see it? How's this one doing on the top? Uh, yep, this one's also torn on the top, okay. Uh, to me, that's actually getting into priority territory. Let's see what else we found here. Looking good back here. Bushings look good. Okay. 
All right, so we found a, a safety thing, a semi-safety thing. These tires are kind of a safety thing. Uh, the tune-up, sure. But uh, I think we need to do some repair rather than some maintenance. This kind of changed directions real quick. So uh, real quick, I'm gonna go and uh, kind of build this estimate and uh, we're gonna see, I'll let my guy know what's going on and we'll see what uh, where we're gonna go from there. All right, everybody, it's been a couple days. We're, uh, we're headed back onto the Focus. Uh, I've got a bunch of parts here that all say Motocraft on them. Uh, we got front and rear brake pads, uh, got a set of rotors. Uh, I couldn't get um, any Motocraft rotors. Well, I could, but they were like $200 a piece. But I did find, and this is kind of funny to me, some AC Delco rotors. So we're gonna match some Delco rotors with some Motocraft parts and we're gonna put those on a Ford. Uh, I just, I find the irony in that and it's kind of funny to me. Um, also, I've got, uh, got some Motocraft control arms, not the stamp steel junk knockoff ones, but actual Ford components. These are the aluminum ones. They come with new ball joints. We've got new bushings uh, installed with the brackets. And we're replacing both of these control arms due to the uh, the torn bushings that are on the uh, current units. So, uh, like I said earlier, that's priority to me. So we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get through that right now. Now, I did have a set of Motocraft spark plugs that needed to go into this, uh, but my darling wife unit entered a training exercise and she replaced the spark plugs and did the tune-up. So I don't have to. She did make a video about that. Um, if you would like to see the video of my wife unit doing her first ever tune-up, just check the links down in this video's description and it will take you over to her channel, Wife Unit on YouTube, and uh, you'll be able to watch her first tune-up. Uh-oh. Hey, wait a minute. Who did that? Sorry. Yeah, you did that. Anyway, moving on up. Black subscribe button. Oh, you know what? While this is moving up, one more moment of shameless self-promotion. A subscriber purge, that's what I call it. Check and make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Check and make sure, check and make sure, check and make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. All right! God, you were normal yesterday. You don't have to, it's free. And it really helps me out. Let's uh, set this down on the lock for safety. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the front wheels and we're gonna go to work and attack these uh, these front control arms. Again, we're doing both sides, Motocraft factory parts. We wanna solve the broken, sloppy bushing situation that's going on over there. We're gonna start with, we've got two bolts and two nuts on top. There's another one here that runs through that bolts this side to the subframe. And then of course we got our ball joint here. So I'm gonna go after these ones first. We'll get that one ball joint and then, you know, we'll see how it works out. Let's get this thing apart. Now I've got uh, a 19 here and the other side, the nut is a 21. Um, I think I'm supposed to take the subframe down to uh, reach those bolts, but I believe I can get up in there and reach and get it down with a, a flexible uh, ratcheting device here, ratcheting wrench. So I'm gonna try to sneak this guy in and we'll see if it's gonna, if it's gonna work out or not. I think I'm on the nut. Yeah, 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 this is good. All right, loud noises, let's see what happens. Unclicks. Uh, gonna come out. Hmm, do I have the wrench the wrong way? Yeah, my ratcheting wrench is going the wrong way. Hang on, let me try to flip that little button. Nope. There we go. Okay, we've got the bolt. Move some bolt gravity. And uh, drop the nut. Hang on, it's, it's like up in here, hang on. There we go, got the nut. That's one down. Let me try to get nut number two. That one's a little harder, I think. Oh, I see why there's nuts up here. These things also sandwich the, uh, the sway bar. The sway bar bracket uh, goes through these same bolts right here. That's what the deal is. That's why they have a, a nut. Got that one. Is a stupid tight squeeze up there. Okay, those are the two rears. Now, let's see what we can do about the front one. The front one's gonna come through. Yeah, right, there it is, right there. So let's get in there. What is that, like a 17? 
Let's get my 90 degree impact and a 17. All right, let's see if I can sneak this tool in there. And then we'll see if it's got enough uh, oomph behind it to uh, break that bolt loose. Loud noises. Sure do. I'm not gonna take it out yet because we still need to uh, disconnect the ball joint up here. Now with the bolt, looks like that's a Torx fit. I think that's a Torx 55, which is what I brought with me. Survey says, yep, yeah, that's a 55. So what I need to do is hold it on one side with a ratchet and the bit, and then we'll go around here to the other side and we'll buzz that off with the, I think that's an 18 millimeter right there. Looks like it, yep. Let's get in there with that 18. Unclick that and looks like the bolt's gonna slide right out. Beautimus. So, let's see how good my fortune is. Yeah, it moves, good. Pry bar, need more pry bar. Always more pry bar. Just get under it and we'll pry it down. There we go, just like so. So the ball joint is free. Now, I can go back up and get that bolt out that we left in. I left it in because I didn't want the thing to come out of its bracket while I was trying to remove the ball joint. Sometimes those ball joints need a little bit of abuse to come out. Yeah, back to the pry bar. Hang on, we gotta pry this guy out over here on this side. Let's get behind it and give her a tug. Or a shove or a press or a pry. We're gonna pull it out. Kind of. I'm out. There we go. Got it. All right, that's one removed. So we got our new unit here. Uh, again, we can see that the bushing is not torn and is in excellent condition because it's brand new. Again, this is a motorcraft part. So what we need to do is slide this little unit up into its place right here, which is kind of going to be hard because. I gotta sandwich it between the brackets for that uh, sway bar link. So I think what I'll do is try to get the ball joint set in first, and then we can wiggle that back bracket in. Just change the order of operations a little bit here and see if that helps us out some. Hmm. See, the issue is that other side, the, uh, the sway bar is still bolted down to the subframe. So I don't have all types of space here to maneuver this thing. So what I'll do is kind of get it set up a little bit here and then uh, we'll put the ball joint in and then try to tap it in with a hammer or pry it in with pry bars. We'll, we'll figure it out somehow, some way. No, that's not working. There we go. Ball joints kind of lined up. Need to change that angle a little bit. Hmm. Yeah. Let's try that. I pushed the ball joint over slightly. Why well, you guys can't see, there's blinding lights in your face. That's not good. Terrible cameraman. Okay. The ball joints up there. Let's run the bolt into it. Just to kind of hold that in position. Are we in all the way? Nope. Yep, there we go. We'll put that nut back on. Give this thing a couple impacts and then we can work the rest of it. Get on there, please. There we go. Loud noises incoming. Okay. okay, so we're kind of in position here. Now I just need to get that thing sandwiched between the little bracket for the sway bar and the bracket on the bushing. So I think what I'll do is try to go in there with a pry bar and just pry this sway bar up some, and that should give me the space to nudge this control arm into that hole right there. 
Okay, what we'll do, I'll go in with the pry bar right here. And we're not on the boot, we're on the metal part of the uh, steering gear. Let's pry up on that sway bar. See the space right there we created? And then we can push this pushing in and under it, just like so. There we go, now that's in position. So, since these are the hard ones, we'll go ahead and get that little bolt on the other side set up, which we're pretty close already. And then, uh, then we'll go back and get the, uh, the two rear bolts. This thing's pretty close as it is. Couple little pry bar taps. Almost. There we go, we'll get under it. That's it. Bolt coming in. There we go. That threaded nicely. This is good. Let's run this guy down a little bit here. Kicks. Nice. Now, we'll swing around to the back and get those last two bolts lined up and then uh, inserted. All right, let's, uh, let's see how close this alignment is. I, I think we're almost dead on. Almost. Not quite. Sway bar's a little off. There, aha, there it is. Got that one in. Next one's coming in on the back. And I'm coming up with the nut that I just dropped. Ah, gravity hit me in the left. Not gravity. Going from the back on that first nut. We'll finish the second one up on the front. Okay, front nut coming in. I know you guys can't see my, my hands in the way. Okay, it's threaded. Now, I just need to uh, get in there with my ratcheting little uh, wrench here. And get down, a whoa, flashlight. And I'm all butterfingers. Anyway, going back in with the wrench, we'll slip it over that nut and then we can uh, impact that guy down. Just like so. So close. See how tight that fitment is in there? Not, a, not easy to get a bite on that nut. Hang on, I'm working on it. Bear with me, folks. Is that about, well, that's close. Let's send it and see what happens. Nope. It's reversing. That's not what we want. Re-reverse. Please get on there. Come on, you. Hmm, that's not working for me. Perhaps I'll have better luck with just a simple, more direct approach. I don't know why that didn't fit the first time, but it fits now, that works. Loud clicky noises. And uh, of course, we got the one on the back side. Let's get out of this little dungeon here. You guys can't see what's going on. There we go. Is that on? Sure is. Click. Alrighty, that's one control arm. Good to go. Let's move over to the passenger side and we'll, we'll uh, repeat said procedure. Right about mm, here. Let's do the ball joint first. Why not? Yeah, let's get some light on the subject here so we can see what we're doing. That's good. Again, we're coming in with the, the Torx bit T55 and our 18 millimeter. 
rapid unclicks. Okay, moving forward, let's go ahead and get the bolt on the control arm. That's not cool. Look at that. Ah, oh, what? There's stuff in the way. How am I supposed to get that out of there? Uh oh, you got me, Ford. You got me. Yeah, this needs to come out, but there's there's an AC compress compressor in the way. Hmm. This was easy. Okay, let's move you guys up here. Maybe I can squeeze that out. I'm gonna try to take it loose and squeeze it out before we uh, start pulling compressors and whatnot off of there. Uh, so uh, uh, let's make the attempt. Let's see what's gonna happen. I don't know if it's gonna come out or not. Actually, I need to rephrase that. It is going to come out. The question's gonna be is how difficult is that operation gonna become? Unclick. Well, that's tight. It's like ratchet breaking tight. Oh, come on, turn, you. There we go. It's moving now. Yeah. One click at a time. Or two or three. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think that's going to come out of there without unbolting that compressor. Unless there's something I don't know. Ford guys, do you know? Is there something I don't know? Am I doing it wrong? Banji fatigue. Noodle arm. And I just unscrewed this into a corner. Can't get my tool back. Retightening the fastener. Come here. Give it back. Okay, it's kind of coming coming out hmm <laughs> there we go we'll just bend it just some slight bending it's not it's not bending it's it's form fitting that's what it is yeah we're form fitting this in reverse come on do it. And uh, we're out of space and it ran into the compressor. I've got to, I have to pull the compressor off. All right. Well, this escalated quickly, didn't it? Let's pull the, uh, this splash shield thing down. Give us some more space. Thought I was going to cheat and kind of game the system here. And I was wrong. Mechanic game system pays for it. All right, so wisely positioned, there's like this metal skid panel protector thing on the bottom of the compressor, and that's probably so you can't run over something and smash the compressor in. Anyway, we need to remove that guy. A couple 10 mil bolts. Ooh, those are, that's the bolt that holds the compressor to the oil pan. That's, this is gonna get interesting very fast because that's the stretch belt. And I think by taking off the panel, I'm taking off the compressor. Let's see. Yeah, that's that's all the compressor bolts right there. Ah, uh, how? Oh man, this upsets me because the labor guide was wrong. It was so wrong. Hmm. Okay. So what I need to do is remove the stretch belt. I wonder. We've got a 13 mil bolt. There's one more holding this compressor on. Let me pull that off and we'll see if this thing is like gonna turn at an angle. Maybe I won't have to uh, replace that belt. The thing about stretch belts is if you unstretch them to remove them, then you need to replace it. And then I don't wanna replace it because we don't need to. So let me see if I can work around that. Or I could lower the subframe down 
could do that. It's a it's a possibility here. Um. Nah, we're, we've already gone this far. Let's let's do the compressor thing. Well, what's the worst that can happen? I have to put it back together. Okay. See how it turned? That's the uh, the tension coming off the belt. So we'll pull that thing off of there and this is still in the way but at least now I can move it some let's see if this is gonna help us out or, or not maybe hopefully probably yes no that didn't help backed into more of a corner than I was when I started okay uh, now what do we do Come this far. Let's go ahead and disconnect. Phone's ringing. Let me disconnect the, the electrical connectors so I don't break them. And maybe I can just kind of give this a tug and pull it down. Hello, race phone, race speaking. Hey. Be right back. All right, let's go back. Try this again. I'm off the phone now. The person I was talking to was gonna know. He's gonna know. I I think. I think I can muscle this out. This is totally not the right way to do this and bet four guys are laughing at me. Yo, I win. I win. Didn't lose the subframe. Ha ha. Got it. That's the bolt. Victory is mine. You know, I say that like I'm not going to have to put that back in and that's going to be fun. Uh, well, anyway, we'll, we'll deal with that later. Let's go ahead and get these two bolts out next and then get this unit uh, removed here. Now let's see if I can get this thing in. Yeah, I can. I, I, you know, I, I tried this when I first started the other side and it didn't seem to fit very well. I don't know what I was doing wrong, but now I can get this in no problem. Don't know what the deal is. Anyway, loud noises. Must have been operator error. Usually is because the, the bolts didn't do anything. They were just sitting there. So definitely, definitely operator error. Come here, nut. Got her. Put that one aside and then I'm gonna get in and get that other one. Yeah, see now we're not lining up. It's not uh, a little off center and whatnot. I see you nut. Got it. Okay, we need pry bar for the ball joint right here this guy no we don't it's out like I said I win ah. come all the way out please do what I say oh yeah we need to pry bar that out okay I remember now very very thoughtful forgetting forgetful that's the word forgetful today I don't know I'm distracted I'm wearing many hats today lots of stuff going on you know, it's like Nicolas Cage said, what was that movie, uh, Lord of War? It's not the double lives that are the problem. It's the triple and quadruple lives that get you in the end. And I think that, uh, I think that reigns true when you have to wear many hats. You know, it's the third or fourth hat that gets you. First two, no problem. Three, all right, manageable. You get into five or six different hats and... Uh, makes the world a little bit more complicated than it used to be. Come out, ding you. Why? Strategic prying, we did. Get that out this way. There we go. Got it, all right. Two units out, let's get that, let's get that other one off the floor over yonder and we'll get that thing bolted in next. So uh, emulating what I did on the first one, we're gonna start with the, the ball joint. I'll change the angle of it a little bit to make it line up a little easier. Let's see how this is gonna, gonna work out for us. Today, I need to kind of turn the steering system a little bit. It's gonna let me extend this knuckle some so I can get the ball joint lined up, I think. I hope it better. 
this side's not fine. I don't like this side over here. Yeah, the other side was easier. Uh, oh, it came out. I heard it. I was looking down for the pry bar. Go in. My pry hammer. in there or not it said nope seriously what is problem I don't know third time's a charm angles aren't right that's what the problem is this is hitting the back of the that backing plate. So we'll pull this out some. Oh. Uh -huh. Not working. A little closer. Stay there. Don't move. Not you, I'm talking to the, the ball joint. Yeah, there we go. Go ahead and we'll run our bolt through. Perfect. And where'd that nut go? Right on the floor where I left it. Torx 55 coming in on the other side. It's going to hold the stud, bolt, whatever. Angular impact eclipse. Okay, now it can't fall out. So, what we need to do is push this guy in and we'll go up top and pry bar that sway bar up some and then we'll slide that rear mount in. Now, that looks like kind of a challenge all on its own because there is uh, the electronic steering portion of the steering gear and that's interfering with my my prying. So I can't pry where I pried on the other side. Perhaps I can get under it. Oh, I see. I see where I can go. I'll go right here. And we'll pry the sway bar up. Did you hear me sway bar? Go up. That's not working. Not working at all. Okay, I'm gonna go down over here and try to get it from the back side. Maybe. Is that gonna work? Uh, perhaps. Yeah, maybe. Not really. Maybe not really, kinda. I think that worked. Yeah, it did. A little bit. Here, what we'll do. Left hand on the pry bar, pulling up on the sway bar. Now we're in business. Woohoo. The top line up, negative. Go a little bit more. We'll do the thread assist method. That didn't work. Sway bar bracket is misaligned. How much misaligned? I don't know. I can't see it. Can't even feel it. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's get the second bolt started. Because that one looks like it's straighter. We'll try that. That one's not straight either. 
far off is that I can't see. I don't know if it's off this way or if it's off that way. I can't really tell. I think it's off this way, so I'm gonna push the sway bar that way. Oh, there we go. It's all right in. That's what we're talking about. Good stuff. So here's our nut. Let's get that guy up there. I hope the light's uh, working out for you guys. It's not, I'm sorry. I'm not going back to do it again. There we are. All right, that nut's in. Beautiful. And once we get these guys on, we only have to deal with the, the hard part. I love the thread assist method. It really helps. Yeah, that light was terrible. Sorry, folks. You couldn't see. I couldn't see. We're all in this together, but hey, at least you could hear me, right? Let me squeeze that guy in. Get her threaded. Uh. 21 wrench. Nice. Okay. One more to go, and that's that uh, goofy AC compressor looking bolt thing over here. Okay, so this is the part where that little, uh, little stunt that I just pulled, trying to get this bolt in and out, is going to pay off. It's either going to pay off or it's uh, I'm going to pay for it, one or the other. I haven't decided yet which one that is. I'm aiming to get this thing aligned. Yeah, just like that. That's where it needs to be. So what I needed to do, I forgot how I got this out. Kind of at a bit of an angle. All right, we got the tip in. Now, and the tip came out, okay. Try again. Hehehe, <laughs> it went. It went a little bit. Go on, Bolt, get in there. Yep, I'm paying for my mistake now. Go on. Yeah, buddy, that's what we're talking about. Okay, now we're in business, kind of. The next challenge is gonna be getting the stretch belt back on without having to re-stretch it and then getting this thing set back up where I can bolt it on. I can't just put the bolts through it and run them in because they'll go in cross-threaded and ruin the oil pan. I can't push it up enough because it, it levers itself and then stretches the belt. So I need a way to push that up to create the stretch, even this out, line the bolt holes up, and then thread them in the aluminum oil pan. That's gonna be fun. Fortunately for me, I have an idea. It comes in the form of a jack stand. What I'll do is I'll just use this guy to press up on the compressor housing. And it, that's gonna press it against the oil pan and simultaneously pull on our stretch belt and get the thing in alignment. Uh, I think that's gonna work. It's either uh, it's gonna work or it's not, right? So let's give it a shot, see what happens. Yes. 
No, yes, is it working? I think it is. Yeah, that's close too. It's it's still at a slight angle, but it's it's pretty close. The the belt is stretched. Um, I'm gonna try to get a couple fasteners in here and see if they'll start threading by hand. I, I do need to get a little bit more angle on this though. There's nothing I can really use to work it. About like that. That's close. We'll just wiggle it. We're real close, guys. It's real close to being able to thread. Oh yeah, yeah, that back bolt threads in. That's nice. Perfect. We're gonna win. It's actually gonna pay off. That back bolt, that's threaded in very nicely. Sweet. Let me just wiggle it some. Let me find. I'm gonna run a couple of these other bolts into it if I can. Not with that socket. Try this one right here. Uh, that one's too too short. That's not the one. This is the one. Yeah, that's not aligned. Let's try this one. Maybe one out back. Let's get that guy in. Well, I know that that one back here is all the way threaded we'll go we'll hit that one see the angle change that's what we're looking for this is exceptionally dangerous by the way if you were to mess this up it's going to cross thread into the oil pan we don't want to do that We do have to take these back out to put the little cover on. But what I want to do is at least get this big 13 bottomed out all the way and then uh, we can take those back out. Oops, wrong way. Kick. Okay, that's back in position. Let's let our jack stand thing down. Get that clear. Good. Now I can go back in and we'll pull those 10 mil bolts out and uh, put that little shield thing back together. Because again, the 13 is what's kind of holding this all together. Probably fixed. Alrighty, shield coming in. There's our small 10. And how many big tens? There's a long one. That goes there. Full threaded one, that one goes here. And then this one goes right over there. Beautiful. Wrong way. Click. Nice. Okay, I just need to get uh, these electrical connectors reconnected. You can't see them, they're kind of up and in the back, but I did disconnect them. To try to squeeze out a couple more nanometers worth of clearance. I don't know how effective it was. Regardless, those are clicked back on. That's good to go. Now we just need to get our, our big bolt here set up and that's a success on the control arm. Where's me ratchet? I gotta say, I, I at first thought I kind of made a bad judgment call with pulling that off, and, and I sort of did. That was very risky because an impatient person would have, you know, could have just ran those bolts in and stripped them out. I probably shouldn't have done that. I probably should have just unbolted the subframe and let that fall down so I could just squeeze the bolt out, but I didn't want to. I like to do things the hard way. It's like kind of my MO. Ah, 
Uh-huh. Maximum manual pickages. Oh, there we go. All right, let's back up and get the skid shield plate thing put back on and we're out of here. And, uh, and since this operation is complete with the control arms, uh, skid plate's down and I just changed my mind. I'm gonna leave that down for now because I've, I've got a couple other things to do, uh, like change the oil on this. So uh, no reason to put it back up just to finish the video when I can just go ahead and finish the video right now by thanking each and every one of you for watching the video. Bet you didn't see that coming. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys did enjoy this video, please let me know about that by tap that like button down below. Um, again, if you have not done so and you would like to do so to support the channel, also I would ask that you subscribe. I would ask that you consider tapping that subscribe button also down below. It's free and you get a notification whenever I post a video if this is the kind of thing you're into. Um, if not, then don't subscribe, but hey, you know what? It never hurts to ask, which is why I did twice. So again, uh, and as always, and that'll conclude my third moment of shameless self-promotion on this particular video. So again, and as always, thank you guys for watching. And most importantly, don't forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of furred, end of control arms, end of day, end of video. See ya.